Thank you. Thank you again. So, um, I will talk more about um, not the process, but less about the project. We were very pleased about the, the comment of the jury saying that the social issues and the, the issue of the climate change are the main driver of uh, drivers of our work, which is true. So I will maybe explain how we came to this. Um, in fact, we are a generation that has been that was born and that has been grown and raised in what we call the Trente Glorieuses, the French modernity after the war. 1950-1980, more or less, and we did observe the changes, especially the one that occurred in the 80s. So first I would like to introduce my three, uh, the three associates, so Henri Baba on the left, Michel Esler and, and myself. Uh, we started the office about more than 30 years ago, we are three landscape architects, we have uh, the office today is about 60 persons, mainly located in Paris, but we have also an office in Karlsruhe. We started the office in Karlsruhe, Germany in 2000. We had a lot of projects in Karlsruhe. We have an office in Barcelona. We have a big project in Barcelona. And recently we have an office, we opened an office in, in Shanghai and in Los Angeles now. He's uh, often traveling there and he's in charge of the project in Los Angeles. So it's kind of big uh, structures. So, um, so a few a brief history about the, this period of the uh, Les Trente Glorieuses. Of course, it's a kind of caricature. Um, so I have a lot of excuses. I'm French, so my English is not that good. <laughs> uh, we have a, during this period, when I, I was raised at that time, um, I don't know how to translate that, but I will translate it like this. The progress was the horizons of our lives. So we were, it was a very optimistic period, very intense, and maybe we forgot that some um, issues uh, has been put apart and probably we're paying this today. Of course, this period is uh, the triumph of the technique, is, uh, is uh, the growth, the, 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 the modernity, the, the reconstruction. The, the, the country has been completely uh, destroyed uh, during the war, like Germany, like many countries in Europe. And it was an optimistic uh, period, with a fast-growing uh, economy, with a fast-growing uh, fast cities, with new, uh, new cities, Livy Nouvelle, what we call, with... Uh, of course, this is the United States looks more caricature, but uh, uh, also is a kind of banalization of the uh, the, the, the Arbeit's pro, um, mainly far from the the value of the of the context, far from the value of the geography, with very optimistic um, um, speech from our uh, leaders, especially this one, <laughs> you know him. And of course, this period was also uh, um, the, the place in France that we have a very strong state of what we call the Grand Projet d'État. Not only the fast speed train, but also the computers, uh, the, the airports, the motorways, and, and so on. So it radically transformed the way, the relationship that we have with the country, changing, changing the, um, the time, the time <coughs> of access, uh, it takes now two hours to go to Strasbourg, one hour to go to Lille, 300 kilometers, three hours to go to Marseille, 800 kilometers, one hour and a half to go to Rennes, about 300 kilometers also. So, uh, as you see on this uh, on this picture, it changes uh, completely the way we uh, we uh, uh, we behave and we live in this in this country. This, of course, added to um, what happened with internet and so. And so on. Well, it's a caricature, but in a way, it ended uh, in a in a strange uh, <laughs> in a strange way because uh, we were overfeeded, over maybe a kind of lobotomized uh, brain. And finally, uh, during the beginning of the eighties, um, doesn't work. Huh? 
I have to leave the man. End of the party. So suddenly, this ended. The economy started to collapse. Uh, we have a, a growth of zero uh, percent, and sometimes negative growth. We have a lot of problems, the social problems. The end of uh, in, in the in industrial uh, France, and also the end of the rural. Um, so, France, because in less than 100 years, and mainly during the last 50 years, what we call la ruralité française, Paris was until the recently, uh, Paris, France was until recently Paris, and the Mont rural the other part of France. And from 1900 to 2000, 80% of the population was living in the countryside in the, in, in the, at the turn of the 19th century, the 20th century, and 20% living in the, in the cities. And in 2000, it was exactly the reverse. So the, the strong relationship that all the French, or mostly all the French, had with the countryside, including our parents, grandparents, has suddenly disappeared. At the same time, a man, probably you never heard about him, in, during the 70s, called the man called Roger de Moore, he was an agronomist. He already um, fed everything about uh, the danger where we were. Uh, and he said at that time, he said that in 2050, if we don't act quickly, and this was in 1975, the world would, be, would, would collapse. So it's still, this is still true, and, and it's today, um, something which is uh, an issue, this is, uh, this is very strong in all our, our work. How do we respond to the, to the social issues and to, these, to the ecological issues that are facing us? The first step was probably, first step probably <coughs> to, on one side to the Mesa Centrist Revolution and also to kind of Beatnik and EP uh, revolution. I was I was involved in this. You know, I was my, my big my eldest brother was throwing stones, but I was younger. So in '68 I was younger, so I became uh, uh, this kind of mix of a hippie and, uh, and Beatnik. I traveled a lot. I went to Ljubljana, <laughs> and 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 probably at the time that we we decided to, the citizen decided to to get, to, to take back uh, the control of the public space as a democratic space, uh, which probably uh, was, has, been, has disappeared, because the public space at that time was either functional, dedicated to cars, you can see the picture of uh, Paris uh, during the 60s or 70s, motherways everywhere, and etc. Either places, official places, dedicated to representation. So very few place for the citizen, and probably that we didn't have uh, any idea of, uh, uh, of what is a, what was the public space in France, a public space where we can we can use and control, because it was quite new for us. So the first was probably the liberty, the, the, the freedom that we had, and, and and the freedom of this is a picture that uh, uh, commission we did in 2005 with Jean Collas Probably the, the, the freedom that we had, in, we could have in the public space, and the freedom that we could have in terms of uh, programmation of the public space. And the first material of this uh, modernity, the green modern, I would call the green modernity, was is is the lawn. You know? The lawn wasn't accessible in France until the mid 80s. It was forbidden. It was a place. It was places where just you, you could look at. But you could you could you couldn't lay on it, you couldn't walk on it. It was totally forbidden. So suddenly this has changed, and probably the, the, the first change that occurred came thanks to Bernard Chumy. So the French government France is very particular, you know, changes until recently are coming from the top. Like Bobo, like the Bobo Museum, designed by Rezo Piano and uh, It was a decision of the state, of the French state, of the president, against, against the will, against the, the against the, 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 
the will of the of, of, of the people, of the architects, of, uh, of, uh, of the institutions, of the old institutions, or against the intellectuals in general. And Bernard Chaumy proposed um, a place, a park, which is not a park, exactly a park, it's uh, a place without limits. It's open to the city. In France, historically, parks are in closed space, so here it's totally uh, imbricate with the city. It's open day and night. There's no fences. And it was designed like a, um, let's say, like a cultural park uh, with a lot of uh, events and with a total freedom of users. One of the uh, main um, elements of the park is the flatness. It's totally flat. I have been involved in this uh, in this uh, project. I was in charge of the flatness. I was Mr. Flat. <laughs> <laughs> Just about below. Huh? <laughs> uh, and I still remember the level, 52.10. You know? So it was, uh, for, the, for the French landscape architects and architects that, that was involved in the public space, which was quite new in France, there's very few combinations, very very little work. It was a kind of revolution, you know? and it was a revolution for the citizens because suddenly everything was accessible. We could enjoy. We, we could have a lot of, you know, open cinemas and concerts and things. And it was a, a democratic space uh, of a new kind. And it's the state. It's it's the, the president, President Mitterrand, who uh, who. Um, um, back to this uh, this uh, this project. So I often show this uh, picture uh, on the left. It's in 1960, uh, 1955. I don't know exactly. Um, so a place like the Champ de Mars, you know, close to la, from. I think the view is is, is taken from the Tour Eiffel. We couldn't access to the central lawn. You could just walk around and look at the scenery. And 50, year late, 50 years later, people having picnics or having fun or whatever in, in, this, in this place. So after La Villette, a few years after, all the parks in Paris were open and were covered with people. Some of them are overcrowded. It, it changed completely the way the Paris uh, lived in, in Paris. So it's still going on now with a lot of uh, projects, uh, so some can be discussed because the new mayor is trying to, to get completely rid of the car. I don't have any more car. I, I, it's, not, it's, not ago. Um, it's a fact that in Paris, uh, um, it's so easy to, to move without, uh, without a car. Uh, that you need. So uh, the way we live in Paris, and I think it's true in a lot of uh, big cities in France, like in Nantes, like in Bordeaux, that have changed uh, also um, drastically this, uh, this last 10, 15 years. Um, the way we live in, in, in cities are completely changed. And probably this is also a kind of comp compensation for the French because the, the link that we have with, uh, with our uh, rural um, um, Roots has been uh, almost totally, uh, totally cut. Probably our first big park that we um, completed in 2006, the Parc des Cormailles, but we planned it in 1999, is a kind of product of this, uh, this period, with a, a loan, a large loan, covering mainly 80% of the, 75% of, of the total area, flat, and with this extraordinary capacity of, uh, of uh, um, polyglots. Uh, the new millennium has changed uh, also. Um, the issue of the, of, the, of the climate change and probably uh, get more intense and it changes and a lot also, uh, the way that we, we uh, are today uh, planning, so we have two main drivers. One is, is the fact that it's social space, public space is social space, it's democratic space, um, 
it has to be polyvalent, uh, and, and then it has to be an economic, it had, it had to participate also to the biodiversity, to the, to the, to the comfort, climatic comfort in the city, um, and so on. So, I don't know if it's emerging landscape urbanism or emerging landscape and ecological urbanism. Um, probably the first project that, uh, that we did in, in, in this, uh, in this way, not completely uh, consciously, is uh, what we call the Bois Habité in Lille. It's, uh, the Bois Habité is part of the, uh, a big project that started in the 80s, uh, a project called Euralil. So it's a project that was initiated by um, Pierre Morois, the former mayor of Lille, with Rancoulas, with Ome. And Ome designed the first, uh, uh, the first part, Euralil 1, which is more about the intensity of, uh, of the city uh, um, um, linked to the uh, uh, linked to the to the uh, new uh, rail route, uh, uh, rail track, uh, the new uh, uh, the Eurostar going to London and also to Brussels and, and the Thames going to Brussels and, and Amsterdam. Sometimes it, it comes through Lille. Uh, so you borrow. Uh, Trying to réveiller, to, to wake up the city, which was a, a north city of Lille, a north industrial city, mainly um, mainly textile and, and things like that. And the second part of uh, of Rally, the Rally 2, uh, with this part of Rally 2, the Bois Habité, is a, a, bo a borrow, an inhabited borrow of about 600 dwelling units and also um, commercial uh, commercial um, areas and um, offices. So this is Lille. This is Lille. This is the center of Lille, historical center here. The Flemish uh, Flemish Lille. Uh, Lille is a Flemish city, and this is uh, Rally Le One. With a huge commercial center designed by Jean Nouvel, and this has been the general design has been done, the, the master plan has been done by Alain so. And today it's completed with another uh, railway station here, uh, and then this hall, um, uh, fair hall designed by Alain Coulas, and the Rally 2 is here. Hmm? So I, I will not describe the entire project because it will be too long, but this is what the, the Place when we when we uh, started the project, so mainly a total totally uh, sterile, a sterile uh, place, impervious and sterile, no green, uh, a totally impervious surface, um, and this this is this is the side, and the side also is in between the motorway on the on the right here, which is used like. Uh, also used like peripheric, uh, uh, like um, yeah. and this um, this boulevard, uh, which is like the Boulevard Maréchal Paris, like an inner peripheric. So it's in a funny way, it's very close to the city centre. It's about ten minute walk, but it's very it's it's far. So we say it's so close, so far, si loin, si proche, uh, and we wanted the the project to be uh, finally to combine the, the the values of the proximity of the city and the values of uh, the suburban area. I mean, it's very green, uh, very comfortable, and very quiet, which seems to be contrary to read to the context. But in fact. So we wanted to, to introduce uh, yeah, the idea the green was everywhere. You could live uh, in the green, and the main idea, finally, the main driver, the main idea was wherever you are, what you have as an horizon is the trees, is the tree canopy. It's a multi-layered tree canopy. You can be in the public space, you can be in your garden, you can be on, the, on your terrace, you can be in the kitchen, in your dining room, in your sitting room, in your room, 
you always be, uh, you always have the, the canopy of the tree uh, as an arrival. And it was hard to believe for the, for the clients, uh, first, and for the mayor, which was something more Pierre uh, Bonnois, but uh, Martin Aubry, uh, because she said, this is just the marketing. Just marketing. So, um, but we insist, and finally we did it. Uh, to do this, uh, this is a cross section of. Uh, um, you can see you can see the bridge here, here. a bit lifted, and the boulevard uh, here. And we decided to we decided to have uh, with François Leclerc to have huge buildings on the boulevard because all of, in this boulevard you have a lot of big 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 facilities and buildings. So since it's the boulevard des Monuments, and have some and have some. Uh, um, buildings so mainly uh, dedicated to sports or to uh, offices uh, um, along the periphery, a bit higher than the periphery, and we made a study, a sound study, acoustic study, and finally we could have a real quietness in the in the center of uh, in the center of this uh, of, uh, this place. Uh, it's it's really quiet. Yeah? So it's like the L'Oeil Psycho, the, the eye of the cyclone. It's very bright. And, and so, uh, the other idea was to try to, not to get completely rid of the car, but to reduce the presence of the car. So we decided to have just a ring road. We have six rows of, of constructions, three to, three to five stories. It's about 12 to 15 meters. It's quite dense. It's, the density is 1.8. I don't know if you can imagine what it is, but uh, it's quite dense. And just a level of uh, car park beneath. And the car park is accessible from each side of the each side of the ring road, of the ring street. So we don't need any more streets between uh, between the rows. Uh, the rows. So it's a kind, we have the private gardens behind it, and we have a kind of what we call in French, les cours. Uh, les cours, like uh, the meaning is les cours du midi, donc, uh, it's like long stripes of uh, public spaces. There's a green surface, which is accessible uh, not to the cars, it's accessible to ambulances, to, to, if you want to move, you can, you can access with a, with a, with a truck. Uh, but it's not accessible. So the, the principle, which is the urban, uh, usual urban <coughs> principle, street, building, garden, here doesn't exist. So we understand that this is cannot be duplicated at a very big scale. It can be. It has been duplicated a lot in many projects, but it cannot be duplicated as a, as a system uh, in the city. Um, and then finally, as you see here. Uh, we also uh, have a distance between the, the walk, the walkway, the public public space, and the facade, in order to protect a bit, a little bit, the, the people with the flats and the people who are living on the ground floor, and also in order to collect the rainwater. Here. So we're collecting also rainwater, and also to ventilate the the, the car park uh, with natural ventilation. So it's very simple. Uh, and in fact, um, the developers uh, play. Uh, they, 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 they were enthusiastic, and they take, except one or two, they take very good architects, and, and I think it's quite successful. <laughs> so to do this, we also uh, bring big trees. This is supposed to be a street, huh? so. And we, we, we bring big trees, large trees that we we, uh, uh, we bought, uh, um, and, and, and make it preserved in a, in a nursery. And we forced also the uh, the, uh, the developers to put the big trees even in the private plots. So this is this is the garden side. So this was a few years. A few years after, I think three or four years after. So it's not an alignment, it's a bit, you know, the trees are a bit moving, and the surface is green, and then you have the ditches on, on the side which are planted, and, and the walk. 
to work on the side to, in order to, if it's raining, not to be, uh, uh, to have the feet uh, wet. Uh, finally, the, 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 at, the, at, the, at the bottom of the, of the rooms, of the, uh, we, we have uh, larger ditches and we, we collect the, the water and then the water free fight. This is uh, the garden, private garden in between. So the other thing is that uh, finally it's not private. So we have, uh, in, 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 not in all, but in many, in many um, places, uh, um, you have the privacy of about four or five meters, and on each side, and in between, you have about eight meters that are shared. So you have different scales of privacy of, uh, in, in this place and in. in you can see that how dense it is, it's a kind of urban jungle, which uh, sometimes also very productive because you have some fruits and, and some of the trees, and so it's a kind of uh, for like a misty, small for like a misty. Um, so probably, um, um, when I talked a few years ago with the, uh, our client, which is a public, public private partnership, um, what we call uh, établissement uh, uh, SPL, Société Publique d'Aménagement. Uh, Jean Sobilo, who is a great uh, public developer, he said, finally, we invent the first eco quartier, huh? the first eco, <laughs> without having the, the label. You know? uh, and it's a fact that this is to, today um, very um, uh, duplicate as a system. So probably this was the first experience about inventing, uh, uh, changing the condition of a place, which is a sterile place, impervious, mainly polluted, into a fertile ground, fertile ground, with a multi-year layered system that not only collect and manage the rainwater, not only, but also uh, provide different scales of, of uh, spaces, different uh, quality of uh, privacy, and also um, offering um, climate comfort, knowing that I heard recently that uh, because some people said we don't have we don't have heat waves we live very not not often so we, we maybe we, it's not the best place to do this kind of thing. But what I learned recently is that the, the, the regions in France that will be the more affected by the, the climate change is not the south; it's the southwest, the border region. It's Alsace, no? Strasbourg, the region, and it's the north, it's a big region. So, uh, finally, I think it's a good thing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good thing. Uh, about the dog, so thank you for the presentation and, and, uh, and the praise. I'm <laughs> very honored to. Saint Juan is, uh, is, um, is um, a huge uh, new development in the northeast of Paris, so what we call former Red Belt, which was mainly. Uh, run during uh, decades by the Communist Party, um, industrial science, uh, worker, uh, uh, many uh, um, people who are living there are workers, we are workers. Today, uh, it's, uh, it's the world. I mean, we have about 140 nations living there, no? people from different nation living, nations living there. So you have the world, it's incredible, you know, and the world and people having different ways of, of, of living, uh, something very different, uh, and, and the park was a place to, to put them together and to, to mix them, and, and it's not enough just to provide a lawn where you can play, or, or uh, games for the kids, uh, you have to find something else that will um, offer um, um, a shared space uh, to these people, uh, something specific. <clears throat> so this area, the, the park is about 12 hectares, it's also the link between the, uh, the new borough, mainly on the, these two sides, and the existing, existing borough built um, in the 70s, 60s and the 70s. It's along the Seine River, but you cannot access directly to Seine River. There's a huge road uh, which is uh, going to Paris here, and it's, uh, 
it belongs to the region, and so uh, it's, an, it's not the same client, and it's quite complicated to, to make a project in Acre, currently, to, in, in, in this place. What we decided to, our main objective, in, 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 so we have two objectives. One is uh, to provide a, a, a space that could be shared with the, the, all the people living the people living there, including the new ones, which are mainly middle class uh, new owners. Uh, so new kind of, you know, new kind of uh, um, many young people with uh, young kids. Uh, another part of the French society, you know? uh, and also, of course, to, to manage the, the, the floods, uh, to manage the to manage the, the, the collects and and, and, the, and the cleaning of the, the rainwater, in, including the, the roads, kind of big machinery to produce a strong biodiversity, and, and and so on. So the other thing is that. Uh, um, we were a bit embarrassed because finally uh, this place has a multi-layered history. It has been, it's still a castle, but it, it, there was a big private garden that was belonging to the aristocrat that uh, has the castle. Then it became a discharge site uh, at the, the end of the 19th century. It was also, it has been a race course. And then finally, the only thing that was left uh, when we arrived is pollution. Uh, it's uh, um, heavy pollution. And um, workers, uh, gardens. Mm -hmm. So finally, the, the layer that we often work with, the notion of layer, whatever are the layers, and the layer that we could pick and, and start with was the, this, uh, this uh, social background place and uh, the shared garden. Um, shared uh, workers uh, so we decided to we decided to invent the system with two levels uh, that are like two hands you know, in brigade like this like fingers in brigade fingers one in the, at the lower level which is dedicated to mainly to nature to water we have a permanent basin uh, to water and biodiversity you can you can go there but it's quite difficult you know? It's, it's not easy. And other surfaces like different stripes um, uh, that um, are dedicated to different functions of the, of the park. One of the functions is, uh, the main function is what we call the jardin de partage. So it's not only that we kept the, the, work, the, the, the gardens of the, of the workers, but we took out the fences. It's open to the public. We mix these plots, the, the different plots, with new plots that are well, given to associations or to individuals. Uh, and it's when you enter to the, in, into the garden, you cross it. It's not, it's not, it's not enclosed at all. You can stay there. You, you have uh, some places where you can have picnic. Is, there are tables and things like that. It's, it's part, completely part of the garden. It's not something which is isolated. It's completely part of the garden. If you enter the, into the garden by through this this part of the uh, of the city, these are buildings, you cross the, you cross the garden. Uh, and then we added we added a, a greenhouse, a big greenhouse, about one thousand five hundred square meters, um, with box inside. And in this greenhouse, we have. A, I don't know what the place for the bees, not for the bees, but to collect the, to collect the, the honey. Uh, we are producing honey there, about 300 kilos per year. It's a place where people are exchanging plants, where the gardeners from the city are also providing plants. The gardeners of the city are here, they, are, oh, they were already located there. And they, they also provide plants, they, and we have a lot of uh, experience. And we have a kitchen, we have a big kitchen. So the pe people are coming to learn how to cook. You know? People are sharing their, uh, their uh, experience, cooking experience, from different parts of the world. And kids are coming here to learn to, uh, uh, about food, about uh, you know, how, to, how, to, how to behave correctly with nature, but also how to, how to cook uh, in, a, in a proper way. So uh, this works really well, and it was not part of the brief. Um, 
management of the rainwater was part of the brief, but not uh, this, uh, uh, the way, the, the, the greenhouse and, and, and the, uh, the way that we uh, manage these, uh, these gardens. And then we have an orange stripe, which is uh, uh, what we call La Prairie. So it's a wine place with a prairie uh, that is cut um, differently every year with a lot of flowers. People are picking flowers. And so maybe in the future it could be more gardens or more I don't know what. It's a space that can evolve, can be changed in the future. Then we have this, uh, this connection linking the castle. So the castle this year, the castle is funny because it's the castle where in 1820 uh, the government signed the restoration of the privilege of the aristocrats that has been uh, taken away during the French Revolution. So uh, it's a funny side of history. Uh, um, so this is a public, it's not private, it's a public uh, facility. And this stripe is this stripe is the, the main link between the two, the, the, the existing borough and the new borough. It's very wide. We have a lot of events that are um, happening uh, there, and it was important for us to, to, to invent a place that was uh, a shared place for the two sides of the city. Uh, it is probably more or less and also the place that was the limit of the floods and it was, uh, it was uh, an alley in the 18th century part of the, of the, the garden of the, of the castle and then we have a lawn which is uh, uh, a slope and of course uh, so you see the cross section so um, finally we have these different, different stripes are, are downgrading slowly towards the, the Seine River, parallel to the Seine River, so we always have, we don't see the Seine River. It's difficult to see. But uh, you see the scenery of the Seine River as a, as, as a void, uh, as, a, as, as a void to understand that it is the Seine River. So it's a huge open landscape, um, very generous. Um, the other thing is that uh, on both sides we have two spaces that are acting like terraces overlooking the park and overlooking the other side of the park. It was important for us to, when you enter, to see the other side of the park. You know? In a way, it's, it makes the park bigger and it's also a way to um, demonstrate that uh, the city is all around, and it's one single city. So this is the greenhouse, so we have a lot of things that are happening, and a lot of cooking, and the importance of cooking, um, and the kitchen, and the rent, and the kids are So you can see people coming from everywhere, this is incredible. And finally, the water, uh, the system the, 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 that collects the water, we collect the water in, in, in the streets, on the Paris, here on this uh, urban terrace, we have no fences. The other things that we avoid fences. In general, we try to avoid fences. So the history in France, the park are enclosed space with fences, and once it's closed, you know you can you can benefit from it. So it remains closed, but we don't have the, we don't have fences. We reuse the system that we use in the French classical and also English gardens called the haha in a different uh, in a different way. We learn a lot from 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 the road, not in a stylistic uh, point of view, but uh, for the science of the of the limit of the edge. Uh, and so, when it's closed, uh, you don't have a fence, and you can install yourself all around, and you can you can benefit from the from the park. So we, we collect the rainwater here. It's clean first in here. It goes to the, uh, to the main uh, basin, and, and then it's, uh, it's, it's uh, again clean in this uh, kind of river uh, a second time. And we also collect uh, water from the, what we call it, gris, grey water, from the, uh, from the greenhouse, and other uh, um, 
water from the, uh, from the new buildings, these are new buildings, these are already existing, in order to have a continuous uh, current um, for this page. Uh, so when we have floods, so finally the level score goes up and invade completely the, the space. So um, in terms of ecology, uh, it's, it's uh, incredibly uh, rich. We work with some ecologists, they added some branches and things like that, and stones and things like that. And, and so it's, it's really a, a, a mix of um, space uh, used by man and an ecological uh, system dedicated to, to nature, physical. So this is what's during the construction. Uh, I don't see very well. So you can see the, the upper terrace on the side. Is the first uh, first ditch. Uh, here we treated the, the grey water, and behind you have the uh, the, the gardens, uh, uh, shared gardens. So you can you can you can stay in a bit. People are staying. I mean, people who are working in the in the, the offices, uh, they, they come in in the garden and. This is the, the axis, the big axis, and the lawn that is submitted to the uh, to the uh, to the floods uh, during a huge uh, huge uh, rains. So each time you cross, it, you, know, you cross the uh, sunken places, and the uh, the idea of the crossing is a very important thing in in, 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 uh, in this part. And the limits, the limit of the, of the park and the city side, the existing city side, with this uh, <coughs> system, and with the terrace of the of the castle in, in, on the background. Another project is in Marseille. It's uh, it's on the same scale. It's uh, today. It's nothing is built. It's a 20, 20 years, twenty five years uh, process. So I don't know if you see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a new borough in Marseille, uh, about 150 hectares, so it's quite, quite big, uh, along the, the harbour. But it's, uh, we have a strong topography, so it's a bit lifted. You can overview the, the, the city, uh, the, the harbour. And finally, we had two main ideas. One is to continue this axis, which is existing axis, going to Les Calons, Firmini and Les Calons. Max du Prado, and ending in the village where the impressionists were, were, were painting at the turn of the 20th century. Um, the continent of Axis has uh, something which crosses the entire city of Marseille, uh, including the, the suburb from the uh, natural spaces of the Calanque to the, uh, the, the foothill of the La Côte Bleue, the Côte Bleue. La, la Côte Bleue. Um, and the other thing is this, so this is the, the site, the, the park of Les Egalas has a first element of a bigger park that goes to the, uh, up to the mountain. So um, the idea was to take the opportunity of this project, finally to engage Wider, uh, uh, wider, more territorial um, um, projects at the metropolitan scale. So, concerning this, there's a lot of small today, small existing private spaces, and sometimes it's just blocked. The river is blocked because you have an industrial site, but they would be they would they would be removed uh, within the next 20 years because. Um, they are located not in easy uh, places for, for them. So this is the access, uh, uh, which is a Belvedere. Mm -hmm. So we, we rebuilt the Belvedere, put the infrastructure just on the, underneath. Today when you arrive in Marseille, by, through this, uh, uh, there's a, a motorway, that is a lift motorway, when you arrive in Marseille, <coughs> you can see, you can benefit the scenery of, uh, of, uh, of the place. And Marseille is an incredible space, an incredible uh, 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 landscape and this uh, this infrastructure is quite old. We have to rebuild it. So
So the idea that we had is to, uh, to combine the reconstruction of the infrastructure and some construction, of course, because we have to pay this, and also uh, um, a kind of uh, a walk, a long walk, that can provide a, um, an incredible better day over the, the city and the, the, the harbor and, and, and the sea around Marseille. So this is the, the mountains where, stops, where starts the, the river of Les Egalades, and the idea is uh, in the future to have a, a continuous connection between the mountains and, uh, and the city uh, center of Les You can see here and, and see here. So, uh, concerning the, 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 the water issue in, 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 in the southern France, it's, uh, I don't say that, a regime, a regime Mediterranean, Mediterranean regime of, uh, of rains. You have heavy rains with heavy floods, and, and you can have, at the moment, it's just, you know, something like 200 meters per hour, and a few hours after, 100 cubic meter per second in the same place. So it means that the entire borough uh, uh, was uh, flooded. Uh, it was uh, frequently flooded. The issue for us was to invent a park that could be a slower. We have, an, we have a network, an underground network, which is totally insufficient and with an existing one. And the idea was to, to use the water Permanent water has a feature in the park, and when there is huge, there is huge rains to divert the extra uh, water that cannot fit into the into the underground uh, network and, and to flood the, the park. But to do this without destroying the park, we had to we had to have a maximum of three meters, three millimeters slope per meter, very gentle slope. So. The work we did was a work uh, a lot about manipulating the topography in order to slow this water in order to not to destroy the park and also not to be dangerous for people. So it's a kind of uh, machine, which is a park, a hydraulic machine, of a, a, a huge uh, 15 hectares slower. Uh, so this is when there is no. Uh, no uh, floods, no heavy rains, and when it's, it's, it's flooded, it's, it's this. So it works. No? So today it's not built, but uh, we are working with uh, engineers, and it works. Um, so it, it, it means the water uh, goes at a very slow speed, and this is our main work, just to manipulate it. The last one, maybe, I don't know. So the last is Canopia Urbana, which is probably the last. Uh, uh, again, here we're trying to to um, to explore the the idea of riding uh, nature in city, you know? uh, human needs, and, and developing uh, biodiversity, and providing climate comfort, and fighting against the climate change. So the main the three objectives of Canopia, the main objective was one, to invent this hybrid system between nature and city. The second was to uh, invent, uh, the, the restore the vertical chain, which is the, the, water, the, the water cycle. Uh, not only the water cycle, because also we have a lot of things on the ground. We have the metro, we have, the, we have, uh, we have uh, um, archaeolo an archaeological site, we have the Recanta, which is a former canal that was uh, providing water to the historical medieval city of Barcelona, uh, and, and other things, and, and, and uh, we have a tunnel now. Uh, and uh, so restoring, inventing this vertical element which links, which, uh, links the subsoil, uh, the city ground, and, this, and the metrop metropolitan horizon of the city. We don't see much. I think it's what we what we understood when we did the competition is that uh, we, we 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 make we made an, ana an analysis of uh, of the, uh, the the existing parks, only the parks, no? and we uh, including the recent one. And finally, what we understood is that the more recent were the parks, 
the more small were the parts and the less fertile were the parts. I mean, the ground was mainly hard surfaces. So I'm not talking about design. They used to design very well. The Spanish, the Catalonian, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but this was a fact. So we said, no, probably this, we have to change the paradigm and to, uh, to, um, to minimize, to, 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 uh, to, uh, to avoid the, 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 uh, the ground which is, which is impervious. To, to, to make a fertile ground and to provide something that the Catalans and the Barcelona people from Barcelona never, never had. It's also a fact that in Serda Plan, Serda Plan, uh, the, the, this uh, Barcelona of uh, uh, the new Barcelona in, in, around 18, 1850, it was a system with a grid of 130 meters uh, plots, uh, blocks. Um, and three main axes, uh, La Gambia, you don't see it, La Gambia here, La Diagonal, and La Meridiana. La Gambia and La Diagonal crosses the entire city. La Gambia from the Rio Besos, which is here, to the Rio Obliga, close to the airport. No, it's 30 kilometers straight down. La Diagonal from, from, the, from the sea, which is Part of the plan of, Bas of uh, Serda's plan that has been completed recently, uh, and, and it's always the mountain uh, and the diagonal, which is not so um, so clear, but at least, and this three uh, axes are crossing in the place of Glorious, the place that we are uh, today are, are working on. So it's it's a it's a masterpiece of Barcelona, of the new Barcelona. It's, uh, it's maybe the center of Barcelona. Um, in Serra's use, uh, the blocks were not built on four sides, they were built on two sides only. It means that the city was ventilated, and the blocks, which are very wide, 130 meters on each, each side, uh, were planted in the center. So, of course, nothing has been done like this. They are complete walls, all of them are completely built, which made it better. I don't know. And the blocks have been completely uh, constructed all of, on, on the full face of the block. So Barcelona is not a green place, uh, and Barcelona, uh, there's a lot of trees, is largely an impervious surface. And when you walk in Barcelona during summer, and there's no shade, it's a nightmare, you know? and it will be worse in the coming, the coming years. So uh, for us, this place has to demonstrate. At the same time, that it could be a, a crossing, because it's also an interchange for the tram, for the metro, so it's a big interchange. Um, a, a crossing for the, for the people coming from different borough. Uh, it's a crossing for the network on the ground, for the, for the network. And, um, and a place where you could have uh, events, uh, so an urban square, and at the same time a park that acts not only as a a driver for biodiversity, but also as a driver, a climatic regulator at, at a, a wider scale in the park. And probably this a system that can be duplicated now, so there's a kind of a generic an idea behind it. So I want to explain it, you can see it. The last, the last was this, uh, it, was a, it was a roundabout, this is a Tour de Jean Nouvel. It's about 20 hectares, the entire surface. The park will be 12 hectares. The entire surface is about 20 hectares, and this was the last construction of the roundabout that we had. The nice design, nicely designed roundabout that has been uh, destroyed. So today, this is uh, well, this is not very recent, but they are building and, and, and they changed the system of mobility and the and system of functionality of the, of the streets in Barcelona. Uh, and they are building a, 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 a tunnel here just to cross the park. And, as they constantly go all around, around the park. Um, yeah, so the idea is to... La Diagona is will be heavily planted, so it's quite planted, so in, in the view, we could have two axes that can be uh, linked to the sea and to the river or the mountain, which is the La Diagona uh, and, uh, and uh, La Meridiana. 
having different parts here, including La Sagrada, which is designed by uh, Catalan architects and also by the way state. I think it's Sansbine, it's in standby now. And the Park de Chutadela, which is uh, a little park in the, in the city, and this connects to the freeways. So, the first thing was uh, to respond to the necessity of, uh, of having a continuous uh, city ground, eh? people coming from everywhere. So, it's a uh, sol continu, means that you have a continuous, uh, <coughs> mainly uh, horizontal plane, uh, all, all over the, uh, the space. And then we have uh, the canopy, the tree canopy, a multi-layer tree canopy that covers the most of the, of, of the park. And then we have the system of the nodes. The nodes, which are either programmatic nodes, either biodiversity uh, nodes. In a way, I would say that uh, the, the city ground is more dedicated to people, with nodes that are enclosed space, and dedicated to biodiversity. And the more you go on the higher levels, the more the canopy is intense, and the more it's dedicated to to, uh, to nature and biodiversity. So when we ask, when we think about the nodes as a space that could be uh, um, dedicated for, for biodiversity, we ask to an ecologist, uh, do we have a system that, uh, that works, that is not a continuous corridor? And the guy told us, yes, of course, stepping stones uh, invented by Bennett, an American scientist, uh, it works. Uh, you, need, but you, need, you need to have enclosed space, so the nodes, the biodiversity nodes are enclosed. You, know, you cannot enter them, and they are quite big, a uh, minimum of 30 meters of diameter for a small one, um, and, um, and it, they are close one to each other, quite close one to each other. And you see it works, and if, if it doesn't work through the ground, it will work through the canal. And of course, restoring the vertical to time. <laughs> so, tac tac the canopy, back into change, la maqueta, <laughs> and the film. <laughs> but it doesn't work. Yes. So, it was the first time that we were doing this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the guy walks a bit like uh, Michael Jackson. <laughs> so you can understand the, 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 the notes that um, are enclosed and how the next layer is in general, the environment is provide the common pressure and pressure. You can pick up, you can down the temperature to find something you need to do. And it's also about digital So we have this new diagram, so seven and a half millimeters in the shape of the We start with the one that builds, probably not like this, and we have to because the neighbors to the city of Madrid was 97% of the project, of the commercial project. And we put on the tools and make problems and tools and make sure that's what we can So we have some wide open space with a very technical uh, lawn and uh, recontent, which is less than the canal that was that we restored, which is today totally hidden. Um, that was uh, provided to the uh, to the city of uh, Barcelona in the medieval times until the late century. Okay, thank you.